okay guys I think I might have a problem so this morning I will carry it up really early because I was on Craigslist and I saw that there was an Arigo 3000 denatured alcohol stove for sale for half the going rate on eBay and these stoves this is the best stove to have on a sailboat and the thing is they were discontinued about three years ago um, so now everyone wants them there's like this cult underground market for them okay and you can never find one for less than four hundred dollars like there's always people bidding on them and I don't want to spend that kind of money on a stove so I've been patiently waiting for the past several months I've been scouring the internet regularly looking at eBay looking at Craigslist just looking at Google everything and I finally found this guy down in Riderwood which is um, it's about two and a half hours away so it's like a five hour round trip from here that is selling one for 250 and I don't know if like he just doesn't know what he can get for it maybe he doesn't spend a lot of time looking at things I don't know and I wasn't gonna ask but I, I immediately told him that I would just drop everything and get out of bed and go right then to pick up that stove and um, Harriet didn't like that because we were supposed to spend the day together I've been working really hard on splicing orders and just you know I have two and a half jobs and um, I've I've been feeling a little bit stressed out lately more stressed out than normal and it was just another thing and it was putting off a you know it was putting off all of my responsibilities just dropping everything and and B it was interrupting my relaxation and she was really concerned for my my peace of mind and my mental health so um, and I and I saw her point you know it, it's not the healthiest thing to add one more thing on when you have so much to do although I don't know if she totally understood what was at stake here because this stove this is the stove like you don't have an opportunity like this every day um, you know and I think sometimes it's worth readjusting your schedule but um, I was I was a little worried also that it might it might put some stress on our relationship because she, Harriet was not she was not willing to put um, she was not willing to just get in the car and sit in there for a five hour round trip today either and um, you know she really did care about me but I she also she also didn't want to do that and um, so you know life is about compromises and I um, I told the seller that I actually would like to go um, tomorrow right after I get off work at 4.30 um, and so I'm really hoping the stove is going to be there tomorrow. Um, I told him that I could even put a 10% deposit down by sending it to him over Venmo or Cash App or something but I really think this guy doesn't do technology because he didn't have either of those things. He said he'd hold the stove for me and I really 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 hope you will but you never know over Craigslist you know like Craigslist can be a little flaky sometimes so you just never you can't you can't depend on that so I'm really anxious that I'm not gonna get the stove but um, I am looking forward to some relaxing you know we're gonna go go to Trader Joe's get some snacks spread them all out on the table um, you know have a feast take a walk it's gonna be really nice I haven't done this in forever and I really need to
like if I don't get it like I guess I have to be okay if I don't get it like I have to be I have to be okay like that's the that's the lesson I'm learning here is that I can't be so dependent on getting like this thing and there's always you know I have to be cooler in life like I have to let things just come along at the right moment and I think if I don't get it like I've thought like before I even thought this was possible I always have come up with like I came up with these elaborate solutions in my head of how I would build one because it's really it's really a simple object like you just have to it's basically like a stainless steel box with like denatured alcohol canisters inside of it and a mechanism to open and close the opening of the canisters so I've looked at like denatured alcohol burners these little burners they don't quite have the um like, like there's like a wicking there's like a a cloth inside of these burners to help it help it wick upwards more and um and that's kind of cool it's like it's like it's like a little bit of technology in it but <coughs> I have I have definitely thought about how I would get like <clears throat> like a stainless steel box like like a grill like a backyard grill like and take the stainless steel box part of it where you put the charcoal and not like and like put alcohol burners inside of it and like drill them down into the steel and like put a closing and opening mechanism on top of it somehow and then mm -hmm. i can attach gimbals to the side of the box grill or um or even like my seaward hill range stove um my propane stove that's currently on the boat that i don't have hooked up I could just gut it, <coughs> I could gut it, and I could put, um, I could put denatured alcohol inside of it. Mm hmm mm hmm So, I mean, there's ways that I could, like, make shift it, and if I do get the stove, by the way, I'm already thinking of, like, like, on that episode of Sailing Uma, where they, they decided that the original Origo gimbals were too dinky, and they made their own beefier gimbals. I'm already thinking of doing something like that. Although my, although Meredith, Meredith said that she doesn't think they're dinky at all because she has the stove too. She searched, she searched, Meredith also has a Rigo. I don't know if it's due right. She might have been more healthy about it. I know she got it from a chandlery down in Oregon so she did have to travel quite a ways to get it. Um, but she thinks the gimbals are fine. The, um, I trust her opinion, so. But we'll see. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch because I haven't even gotten it. Um, yeah. Well, I think it's really likely that you're going to because, like you said, he's not really up to date on technology. He mm. seems like, I know, he seems like someone who wouldn't be doing that kind of thing yeah I, I don't know why I just have this feeling <laughs> yeah Tofu first, right? Tofu first? Oh, well, you can do whatever you want first. You know, it cooks a little bit slower temperature the alcohol. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but um, I think it's it's worth that because if you're sailing, like if you want to sail around the world like I do, you're not doing this because you're in a hurry. Um, that's what a power boat is for. So. Tata. Okay. Um, yeah, I what I appreciated about it, just as someone who, uh, you know, is coming from outside, is just the fact that 
you didn't have to install anything in order to start it. Like with the propane, you would have had to have a whole like locker and pipes and like our yeah. hoses and like an alarm system. Yeah. And all yeah. this stuff to get it to to a place where you could actually use it. Whereas with this one you just I mean you have to actually put it on gimbal still, but like that even though pretty. Yeah, even though it's just like sitting on a big book right now, you can still use it and there's no problem with it. Yeah, yeah. Um the only thing I really have to watch is to make sure that the book doesn't catch on fire. <laughs> um, because that is one thing about denatured alcohol. Okay, there is one thing that's dangerous about it. And it's not dangerous compared to propane. It's just a little thing to be careful about. Like, the stove is in, totally encased in a metal enclosure. So it's not like wood is going to catch on fire. Except right now because it's sitting on a book. Um because I haven't gimbled it. But yeah. sometimes when you spill a little bit of denatured alcohol, you don't even know that you've spilled it. And you don't you don't know that you're lighting something on fire and it could catch on fire. Yeah. But that's true of a lot of things. So um, on the whole, it's the safest method of cooking. But I guess that's just how tofu is, right? Yeah, it takes a little while. Certainly not the stove's fault. It's totally understandable when you you really need need something and an opportunity falls in your lap. It makes sense. Yeah. Um. And like, I'm glad I waited. I'm glad I waited a day because I really did need to relax. And it was so nice to relax and take a walk. But if I um, if I had lost out on that stove because I waited a day. Um, I don't know if I could have ever... I might have resented you a little bit. You needed someone to give you a little bit of a reality check. But what is reality? What is reality? <laughs> Tell me, what is reality? <laughs> Well, reality is when you have um, three splicing orders, two, two, three splicing orders, a, um, uh, a study group that you're leading to prepare for, um, and uh, just your overall level of stress being high in general. And all of those things that uh, kind of, you know, reality is like looking at your situation and being like, what is my priority the stove. here? The stove. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know. Like I do these things every week. I lead study group every week. I splice rope every week. I've been waiting for the stove to come along for months. I, I know. I I just remember that day and how you like you really felt so happy because you were able to like get prepared for everything. You were able to get your splicing done. You you were able to do all that stuff. And but I had this worry in my head the whole day, like, is he selling it? Is someone else seeing this listing? Yeah, I just, I just remember like seeing you and and just being like, wow, she's not, she's not running around like a chicken with her head cut off. That's awesome. Like, she's not, she's not crying because of stress or because of the way that someone spoke to her and like you know like you were better able to just handle the the normal ups and downs of life and you just got a little break and that I think is valuable and maybe you know maybe to you it's not as valuable as a stove and maybe if it turned out that that guy had sold it to someone else instead of you. Maybe you would have resented me, but I really would have. I still would have 
I really think I would have. Yeah. <laughs> you were so lucky that I got the stove. You were so lucky I got the stove. Because the fact that I got the stove. I know, like, like, Matt, you're all like, you were all thinking like, oh, if I, if I go drive five hours to get the stove, will she break up with me? It's like, if you hadn't gotten the stove, if you hadn't been able to get it, would you have broken up with me? You I don't know? think I would have, I wouldn't have broken up with you, but I would have been like, I would have been so bitter and I would have let you know it for like a really long time. Yeah, it would have been like one of those things that you bring up with every argument, like, and another thing, yeah. you never let me I get that Arigo it. stove, and I lost that two hundred dollar Arigo stove, and I'll never forgive it you. Two, it was two fifty. <laughs> okay, like, like he did say two fifty OBO, but at that point I was just like, two fifty is fine. Yeah, like I would say that just to know that nobody else is going to make a better offer. Yeah, like, unless they want to outbid me, but mm -hmm. it's Craigslist, so. Mm hmm. I'm just separating out all the stems from the leaves. It's so professional. Yeah. You didn't even tell me to do that. Can you believe that? I just did it. Yeah, I wouldn't have done it myself. Wow. So you're really, you're really a step ahead of me. And the gaskets, you put them over the, um, the burners. Like, you have a little metal circle thing that you flick over the burner to close it, but it still kind of evaporates around the edges of it over time, so they give you these gaskets to put over it when you clamp down onto it so the gasket is right over the thing. And they work really well because I still got fuel after all this time. And I don't think I had that much fuel before you. If I run out of fuel, I'll just switch burners. That's a great thing. Tofu back in. Yum yum. You need a walk. Yeah, that would be great. Or just a bigger skillet. <laughs> yeah. One or the other. <laughs> I think I should have put more tamarind. Harriet? Yeah? How do you define origo derangement syndrome? Um, I guess it's, uh, it's kind of like when something, when an origo stove makes you act in ways that seem irrational and interfere with your life or your quality of life, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, just like an obsession with an Arigo stove, mm -hmm. which is, yeah, which is excessive and makes you behave irrationally, I mm. guess. Okay. That's what I would say. Have you seen this phenomenon happen before? No, I I guess uh, I guess on Sailing Magic Carpet they kind of had a Rigo Yeah, she syndrome. did. Yes. Um that's true, she did. She was like searching everywhere. Like she was scheming. Yeah, she tried to um, she tried to buy it off of people's boats that were for sale. Like she was she was contacting people with boats for sale that had Origo stoves on them to see if they would sell it to them. Yeah, like I first saw. Well, I work at Fisheries Supply, so I've been familiar with Origo for quite some time, and I've had the Origo fifty one hundred heat pal heater stove for. The past four years about? I've had it for four years. Um, and it didn't work out as a heater. 
Um, so I use it as a stove. I use it in my entire, the first time I tried Vancouver Island for all those miles, I used the Origo Heat Pal heater stove. But it's a portable stove and you can't build it into the boat. Like, and believe me, I've tried. Like, I've, I've thought about how I might build that heat pal into the boat. Plus, it's only one burner. And it's it's only one burner. Like, I thought about drilling it down onto a, a wood board and putting a gimbal on that wood board. Get away! Get! Um, but it's not worth it. I mean, when you can just have something perfect like, like the Arigo 3000, it's meant to be installed, it's meant to be gimbaled, um, it's just not worth getting anything else. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I first saw, um, I first saw Arigo, I don't think it was really derangement syndrome on Sailing Uma, I think it was just Arigo appreciation. They added Arigo. They, um... Yeah, well, they're never deranged by anything. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. And we have lemons. too much there. It's not so easy when you have a full gallon container. Um, I, this was only looks easy because I was near the end, but usually when you have a full gallon, you're holding it up and it's heavier and some it's dripping down the side. So I'm either going to start buying it in quarts or I'm going to um, get a squeeze bottle and start and keep buying it in gallons and then just transfer some into the squeeze bottle with the funnel. Um, but you know, those are just little logistical things. I'll get, I'll, I'll figure out a system, but yeah, that's the, uh, 
that's the Arigo 3000. I would also like to just show you my Arigo 5100, which was my main cooking method until I got this. Um, it's back in here somewhere. Where'd it go? There it is. Back in storage. So this is the 5100. So it's it's got the same exact mechanism. It's got the same exact canister on the inside, um, but instead of using the knobs to open it, you use this little handle here that you push out. See? Um, and then, like, it's kind of elaborate. Like, you, you use these little tabs to get this part out. Like, the burner part attaches to the canister. And then this is just an empty thing. And then after that, you use these tabs where did it go? Use these tabs to get it off of the canister. And then that's how you fill these things. It's the same canister. So, but it's, um, you know, I, we would, we would keep it on top of the counter and then we'd have to put it away. So it was just like, it was just like, I didn't want to have a whole bunch of auxiliary things on my boat, you know, like on my previous boat, I never got this old princess stove to work. I kept it on the boat. Because uh, I didn't ever get it together to install a, something I wanted. I didn't even know what I wanted at that point. I was so new to boating. Um, so I had all these like, auxiliary things um, cluttering up the boat. Like I couldn't even sit under the table. So that is what that is exactly what I'm trying to avoid here. So now I'm putting it back in the quarter berth. Like I guess it kind of defeats the purpose to not have auxiliary stuff if I can't part with it. Like, I just can't part with it because it's still an Arigo, you know? It's like something I want to collect. And, like, I, I just have this drive to have as much Arigo as possible. And, like, I know I can get a lot. I can probably get more than I, I paid for that thing if I sell this thing on eBay. But, um, I just don't know if I can part with it. And, um... I, yeah, we'll see. I guess that that's just gonna have to be um, something we all find out in a future episode. So I'm gonna leave you this week. Have a good week and I'll see you next time.